inside. Take two. <clears throat> We're not even taking two. We're just continuing. We're <laughs> just taking one. <laughs> All right, here, get off the table. Hit the, the sound. So, hopefully the sound will come out all right. We'll go for, further away. Scoot this up a little bit. Still working the technology. There we go. That's two thirds of learning how to produce a thing. It's just learning like what technology is available and what you can do. Yeah. You know I mean, well, now if you got a phone, you can do pretty much anything. Right. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, I remember back when I was like a kid. You know, like you said, like people were still recording videos and putting them online and stuff yeah. like that. But there was like a whole process to it. It was like you had yeah. to get your like dad's camcorder oh, or yeah. whatever. That's what we were doing. VHS. Right. I came in at a weird... I always say, like, being born in 88, I came in, like, the weirdest spot technological-wise. Yeah. Because I literally remember still seeing cars with, like, Betamax. <laughs> and, like, I grew up with VHS tapes. Yeah. And now it's, like, everything's digital. Yeah. So, like, I, I remember... I remember my family used to have like an old-fashioned typewriter, like an old, old-fashioned typewriter that like you had to use. Yeah, you gotta put the ink cartridge. You gotta, you gotta, uh, you have to get the white out. Right, <laughs> like a mistake. <laughs> and it's just so weird to to be like to remember that because like most people were either born before that or like after that. Yeah, I so, was here for all of it. Right, exactly. So it's like you were. It's like you. You're literally watching the march of like yeah. see the evolution of it, you know. So that's a good thing. So it's it's being aware though, which, which makes it even more uh, important, you know. So right. you're aware of what's going on. A lot of people just they just use it when it comes, you know. You right. Have a new phone. All right. Great. <laughs> All right. So we were talking about. You started. You started what year? I started Dude. comedy in 2012. 2012. Wow. So you've been uh, this is eight, eight years now. Yeah, I'm, I'm going into my eighth eight year. Years. So uh, what? Uh, do you remember your first uh, open mic? I remember my first open mic was at uh, Peabody's, which was Peabody's. this. It's still there, but it, it essentially it was this like a. They have a great room for it, but they have never gotten. Well, it's not a comedy room. Really. Exactly. Like, what is it? It's, a, it, it, it's like a. It, it's more for like music, but like it, it's a, it's they definitely have like a bar with a venue and a it's solid like an entertainment stage. Venue? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Peabody itself is like an ent full function entertainment venue, so like they've got like it's somewhere between like a sports uh, bar and like a pool hall. Okay. Okay. But they had this room off to the side, didn't have any pool tables, didn't have any TVs in it, had a stage, right? And you would think, like, it had its own bar, and you would think that this would have been, like, the perfect space for comedy, but they have just never gotten it to work in that space. And I don't know if it's just, like... Did they do shows? So, they you did the open mic there. Yeah. And that was, was that a regular weekly open mic? Or? Right, it was a regular weekly open mic when I first started. And then I think it went to like bi-weekly and then like once a month and then... <laughs> and none. <laughs> right. Zero a month. So that's where you started. And yeah. now and your home club is the uh, Tampa Improv. Yeah. So you went from Peabody's... Now, in between there, like, do you remember that first set? The, the first I open mic set? Yeah. I remember my first open mic set. Uh, Did it go been, good? <laughs> it, it was one of those weird moments where it's like I got one laugh, like yeah. one actual laugh during oh, yeah. the course of like five to six minutes. Well, I saw you do a set now. Yeah. You right. got at least two. No, right, right. right. I'm, I'm doubled up. You double right? it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's getting good. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so like, part of the whole impetus for me for comedy was I did. Like, I never really thought I was like a particularly funny person, but I, I like I always knew I was like clever, yeah. like witty, and yeah. it was one of those things of uh, Rob Cruz, another yeah, yeah. person that we both know, was doing comedy at the time. And like he was doing the open mic there or whatever, 
and I, I, I guess between like whoever was supposed to be like the headliner or whatever for that night and like Rob, like they had a gap of time that they couldn't fill, so he was just like, dude, go up and like just talk so to This is your first time? Right, yeah, and I was like, there's no way this is gonna go well. And Did then, you plan on No. Like he was just like, he's like, just go up and do it. And I was like, okay, so like I went up, ate a bowl of dicks. And, but the thing that like... That's an odd show. Uh, show. Right, but the, the thing that got to me was like, I ate a bowl of dicks and there was the thing in the back of my head that was like, I know I'm better than this, right? Like, I know I'm funnier than that. And so like, I can't, I was like, I'm gonna- got you hooked? Yeah, because I was like, I'm gonna come back next week. Did you ever consider doing comedy before? No, I was always a fan of comedians. But yeah. you never thought about it. Huh? Yeah, I never thought about like, me getting on dick. stage. Yeah. So, lesson here, you want to be a good comic, you want to get into comedy, eat a bowl of dicks. Is that what you're telling them? Yeah. I mean, like, don't let anyone else tell you no. Don't tell them, do not tell them you cannot right. eat a bowl of dicks. <laughs> right. You can eat as many dicks as you want. And you will get funny. Yeah. So, so do you... Do you use any of that material? Oh hell no! Like, no. They, do you oh, like they, I, they, I remember they were street jokes. They were like barely. They, they were interesting street jokes, but they were barely street jokes. Like it, one of the jokes that I, when I first started, one of the jokes I used to tell was like this old, old hacky street joke bit about like. Going into the men's restroom, some dude looking at your dick and like going like, oh, well, I can't help myself, <laughs> right? And I, I, I got that because one of the guys I used to work with at uh, the time, he like, I guess he used to tell jokes in Cuba for like a Cuba for a short minute, and like he gave that to me, and he, he's like, he's That's like a Cuban joke. Well, I mean, he was from Cuba. <laughs> oh no, it's a Cuban joke. It's funny in Cuba, man. You gotta tell this joke, okay? So, like, uh, you know, and like Felix was a great dude. Like, he, he was a funny guy, and so I was like, okay, you know, like this is really nice. Like, thanks, you know. And then, like, again, this is like month two of doing comedy. So this is before you kind of get to the point of like, oh yeah, whenever somebody in the audience goes like, I got a joke for you, you go like, oh no, don't take it. Like, you right. <laughs> You're like, oh, thank you for your vaguely racist sentiment. Oh, I will be sure to harbor this. You know? yeah. Well, I mean, you've you've uh, you've played a lot of places since then. Oh yeah, you've done a lot of shows. Is there a, a particular comic that you like working with? Like when you like on the scene, like well, uh, anywhere. I mean, that you've worked with, you've worked with a few people. Yeah, I mean, like, so my thing, like. One of my, two of my favorite comedians that I've gotten the chance to work with is uh, Big J Oberson and Big J, yeah. uh, Burt Kreishner. Burt Kreishner, yeah. Because part of the thing I love about... The machine? Right. And part of the thing is like they, they are so good at being in the moment and like their audience is just so much fun to perform yeah, with, yeah. you know, like... You know, and I feel a lot of times it's like they're very similar to me as people. So oh, yeah. it's like it, it's that difference between like there's a certain audience in which like you know you're putting on a show for them, and then like every time I do Big J or Burp, whenever I'm blessed with the opportunity, it's like it feels less of like I'm putting on a show for people and more yeah. of like oh these are just my people that I'm talking. You're connecting, to, right? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. That's what happens when you get put in front of your audience, the right audience. And that's that's something I don't see as often with the bookers now, is um, putting the opening act that fits the headline, right. which is what causes a lot of the headliners to bring their own opening act because they know it fits their show. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's great. You get in front of the right audience. You know, oh, okay, everything works. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's one of those, man. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like, I have a joke about Casey Anthony, and it's like, that joke's not gonna fly in front of a, like, group of hardcore Republicans. Oh, yeah, <laughs> to the server, right. They're not gonna find the humor in <laughs> a dead baby joke. Right, you know. Some people do. Some people have uh, a little looser... Uh, <laughs> right, you know, and it's like, you gotta, you gotta play to your strengths, you know, but it's, it, uh, it's always fun. Hey, my streets, dead, dead baby jokes. Well, you, you know, I, I I was listening to NPR recently, and the Terry was Terry Gross was talking to Conan O'Brien on the episode, 
and talking. like yeah, I think I heard that one. Yeah. Yeah. Really he, he, he was talking about how like he didn't understand like he was he was suffering from depression mm-hmm. at the time. But yeah. the the main takeaway that I got at that portion of the episode was uh, he talks about one of the beauties of performing is like you're just in the moment, like you're not yeah. thinking yeah. anymore, and like that's the thing I love about performing yeah. for like. Big J's audience is like there. There's never a moment where like I'm trying to outwit people or trying to be like ah, this is how the joke is yeah. supposed to go. It's just like no, this is just us talking. Like, that's the thing. Well, that's the thing with, with something that you're doing live, something that you're doing uh, that requires focus, anything like that. Everything else is gone. That's what. That's right. why people. That's the. Uh, that's the drug. Right. You know. So you chase it after the show. It goes. Oh. What happened to my focus? Yeah. <laughs> I need another drink. But that's, you know, that's a good point. And one thing that I've always loved about, like, doing, like, or let me phrase it like this. The thing that I would love to get to, the level I'd love to get to in comedy, would be to do, like, a stadium, like, do Kevin really Hart or... Stadium? To me, the, a lot of people. to me, the ultimate goal would be to do a stadium like Kevin Hart, and then like after the show, nobody remembers who you are. <laughs> you know what I mean? What if you did a stadium show and nobody came to the merch yeah, table right. afterwards? Right. <laughs> right. Like, went to the park. Right, and th- that's kind of the, because to me that would be the beauty of it because it's right. like I, you made all those people happy, you made everyone had a good time, yeah, and then serious. like you get to fade into the background. That just won't happen. Right. I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> If you're doing a stadium, by default, everybody knows who you are. Yeah, but like, how many people recognize Jeff Dunham on the street? A lot of people. I guess, yeah. <laughs> well, a guy carrying an old man on his arm. Right. Oh, well, yeah, man. but that's what I'm saying. It's like they walk around with that thing. Yeah. You know, I actually took him to press when I was back in the day, and he took, you know, to, well, we were doing radio. <laughs> okay. But you know, obviously, it's for you know the DJs and the. They can't see you. But uh, yeah, I mean, he's yeah, he's, he just I think he just released another special. He did. I, I actually just saw his latest Netflix yeah. special, and I not too good. It, here's the thing: the, I there's part of me that applauds the fact that he's able to reach that number of people, and yeah. like I there's a lot of moments where I'm like I can see that there is a joke here. Like yeah, I can see that you, you happen, right. It's like you built a you built a thing, but there are so many like yeah. dishwater moments oh, that come really? where I'm just like, this is not. This, like you you went out of your way to be the least offensive, least yeah. funny, least interesting aspect of this take. Well, now you say that you would want to work, um, do a stadium show. Do you think you would have that? the show to put on because that takes a different energy right that's and the thing you know? do you think you could put on a show at I, that level I think I mean the e, my ego wants to say tell yes me. tell right. us about your ego <laughs> right I, I'm a comic so obviously I don't have that but <laughs> <laughs> tell us how you can rock 20,000 people in I, one time alright I, I think I have I mean I just think my story is interesting yeah. enough that I could entertain well, you know, you can't go up there and, you know, right. you're not looking for a humorist. Right, exactly. For 20,000 right. people, that's a big... Yeah. Right. You know, they are looking you for... You have to you up know. your energy game. Yeah. And and I, I feel like I could, you know, because I've always... I feel like at that level of energy for... Yeah. That is the kind of energy that you need to be a good host. Yeah. You know? And, like... I don't have... I can't... I'm not doing any stadiums, man. Right. I don't think I could do that kind of energy. I... See, I... I'm very, very... Low key. <laughs> My like I I can play I can play up the energy. If I can I need play it to, up, you know. I mean, like, you know, because can I have a couple. Can I have a pot of coffee on stage? I'm well, I mean, it's your <laughs> show. Why couldn't I'm you? Right? Coffee. This is this is a big right. show, right? Why couldn't you? Right? Well, like, this <laughs> this is your this is your stadium. This show is get a coffee sponsor, right? Yeah, get Starbucks. Slap that on the <laughs> label. <laughs> Like this shit, and every five minutes, just take a break and go. Like this next part of the set, brought to you by Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, who's the biggest act that you've worked with? What would you say? Biggest act that I've worked with. 
you've, I mean, you've worked with quite a few people already. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I guess I would have to say it's either Big J or Bert. Yeah. Just because, like, those are probably the largest audiences that I've gotten the chance to... I've gotten to work with some other people, too, like Bruce Bruce and some of those guys. Yeah, but, yeah. like, I don't, I don't know if those... Because all, they, they all have, like, solid audiences. Yeah. But it, it's that whole difference of, like... Well, I got to work with Big J a couple of times. I got to work with him at the, uh, at the improv in Tampa a couple of times. But also, uh, he was hosting the uh, Red Apple Cider L stage at the Oddball. Oh, okay. Oddball Comedy Fest, yeah. At the, uh, what's the, uh, over here in Tampa. The fairgrounds. Oh, the Tampa, Tampa Fairgrounds? No, no, what's the, uh, the amphitheater thing over there? Oh, it's, they, they've changed that name like know. a dozen times. Whatever. I think it's like 1-800-GARY Ford Amphitheater Whatever now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was hosting that. <laughs> that came through, so. so he was hosting, uh, so each city they go to, mm -hmm. they have, um, a, sh a lineup, like a showcase of about like five, like five of us, I think. Mm -hmm. Five of the five of the comics from that area, you know, five of the up and coming comics. So on that one, it was me, uh, Matt Fernandez, uh, JB Ball. Uh, who else was there? There's a couple more. People. I can't think of it right now. Damn, I can't think of it. Ta that's the that's one of the weird things about tap and w one of the things where like I'm sure this also shoots me in the foot career wise but like I like I'm all every time I get the chance to do a show or something like that I'm always trying to get like local guys to be like to get like a like a show centered around the local guys not a showcase not like seven people going up but like I want to pick out like one headliner one feature you yeah, know just a regular show because like we have such a murderer's row of people here in Tampa there's a lot of good talent know? and but like you never so you never really see them or hear about them on like a bigger format like it boggles my mind well, I mean there's there's different reasons for that and a lot of it has to do with uh, people keeping themselves local. True. Quite honestly, you know, it's like, it's great if you can rock, you know, your town. Mm -hmm. But when, you know, when the uh, city limits is as far as you can go, you know, yeah, if you're satisfied with that, that's cool. But the reality is that you want more. And the only way to do that is to actually go and you have to reach out to the bookers. You have to get in front of them. You have to take the rejection. Right. And that's the problem. Nobody wants to take that rejection. I was actually talking about it with a um, road comment that we both know recently where yeah. she, her advice to me was just like, you need to find a headliner. Like, that's just, true. Right. Well, you know, I was telling you, that's what a lot of them do. So that's an ideal situation, but it's, it's not always like that. Right. You know, that's hard to do. But I mean, like, <clears throat> because that's my problem right now. It's like I have, I have a feature. I, I my again, the ego goes. You, I could do a headlining spot. But if we're being realistic, I'm probably like a solid feature. Yeah. And like to just get feature spots is like so impossible. Because Call they, up for uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> I actually, I actually sent a message to uh, Gary Goldman. Oh yeah. Here recently on because he's doing that like he's doing this tweet a day thing of like writing, and I like it. It was one of those weird moments of like I set a message asking him a question of like how do you do this writing wise and like and there's so much of Twitter where you're like I'm just shooting this out into the void like no one's gonna respond and then he actually like responded on Twitter I was like holy shit like hey, man. <laughs> All right, so I have to ask you this. For this particular show, people need to know, how do you demotivate? How do you relax? How do you chill? What's your, what's your system? What's your process, man? So, I've actually been doing this new thing you know, in order to relax before I get up on stage. Yeah. I've been doing this new thing where 
it it seems like it's such a catch twenty two, but <clears throat> I've been going up on stage with the belief of like this is my last time ever on stage. Yeah. Right. And That's like how you do motivate. <clears throat> Yeah. That relaxes you? Yeah, because <clears throat> it, it's like, it takes a weird weight off your shoulder because it's like, after this, like, you don't got to worry about anything ever again. Fresh is off. Right? Yeah. Whether your show's fantastic or whether it's terrible, yeah. doesn't matter. This is the last time. Yeah. Right? You don't got to worry about what Booker's think. You don't got to worry what the audience think. You don't got to worry about what other comics think. You're just done. So it's a psychological... But yep, it's just takes it takes away the stress of the performance. Right, because you know, again, it's like, what's the worst that happens? Every, yeah. Everyone boos you, and it's like, well, this is the last time. It's like, it's never gonna happen. Oh, is again. that the worst thing that's happened to you on stage? No, I think the worst thing that's ever happened to me on stage was I had some dude, I had some dude like, I always come back to this, but he called me a. Can we swear on this? Yeah, yeah okay. he, he called me a fuck-faced faggot. You can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he called me that, yeah. right? And I was like... And like it was one of those, like... This is like year three, where it's yeah. like I'm still trying to figure out how to handle Heckler. I still don't really know how to do it today, but like I'm still trying to figure it out. And like, he... I was like, points for the alliteration? And like some dude in the audience agreed with him, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, this is the worst." You right? look like, like somebody. <laughs> fairly, you look like some guy they know. Right, and it was, and it was one of those. We and it's like not even these guys were sitting near each other. It was just like That's two dudes, and it was like, and it was like awkward and embarrassing. And it was one of those moments where it's like, I don't know so how to respond to this. So yeah, that's a true. Heckle. So that's the worst thing is a heckle. Right. Has anybody ever charged the stage? I've had one actually over at the improv I had one girl who would not sh we were doing the open mic and she would not it was one of those people who like they feel the need to heckle oh, everybody God. at the open mic it's very important right exactly and so like she did this for like three comics before I got up on stage yeah. so I just I had one of those moments where like because to me there's nothing as disrespectful as that because yeah. I go like hey man yeah. you don't want to be part of the show that's fine right but like even if you don't like me I know everybody here has worked their butt off yeah. this week to get ready for this so why are you fucking ruining this training week? grounds man right yeah, that's a rough one yeah, and be. and so like I, I think after the second time she heckled me like I just turned her I was like are you done are you fucking done it's hard like <laughs> it's hard just Shut down a female heckler, especially if they've been drinking. Right. You literally, basically, they have to be removed because right. you, you can't stop. You can't shut them down, man. You know. It's, it's like they—they're completely wrong. They're completely embarrassing. But they're not gonna stop now. Right. And you know, and like, and I was calling on our friends. I was like, "Yo, your yeah. girl is doing this, and she's making all of you look bad." They're, like, all, yeah. they're all sitting there thinking, yeah, but we did it last. Right. And, it's, <laughs> and I was just like, she's making you guys look like a group of assholes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, like, I just had to be like, I need you to shut the fuck up. She told me, fuck yeah. face, <laughs> so, she, so she got mad and she, like, she threw her drink in my face. She threw it in your face? Yeah, oh, or she yeah. she tried to. You. Yeah, she didn't uh, She didn't get high enough to actually get me in the face. So, you know, she she, she got like a part of my shirt whatnot. It, like they left and then I finished like my last two jokes and I, and I, I had people in the audience be like thank you but it's one of those like you never it's like when dad comes home and you, like you've broken a face like everyone's like oh thanks for correcting that <laughs> like no one's really happy about it but it was like oh thank goodness we don't have to worry about this anymore you know so uh, uh, and you've done a couple of projects with me Mm -hmm. Like uh, film stuff. Yeah, Billy's got a bad brain. Billy's got a bad brain. Which is the anniversary? It's our right. main anniversary. <laughs> um, I'll probably yeah, I'll add that. I'll put a clip at the end. And uh, the stand up. But you also did the pizza party. Pineapples. Yeah. We hosted the show. Uh, do you have? Any other projects? Are you doing other other projects now? Uh, so I got a podcast going on. Uh, What's that? With Alan Dempsey. Uh, Alan Dempsey. Uh, 
called, it's called So How About This? Uh, you can find it on Google Play, uh, Spotify, iTunes, all the platforms. Uh, I'm, I'm working towards writing a, another script project because I had, a, I had a good idea recently. I just finished another one. Oh, yeah? Uh, so like I, I had a good idea recently of like for like an animated show that I've been playing around because like you keep on seeing all these I keep on seeing all these working dogs like the dogs with little vest and so I was just imagining like what if there was like a whole world you know like kind of like in a Family Guy animated style where it's like there's a whole world of like dogs just going to work and so like, like Family Guy right yeah so it's like but like they like just like a little dog doing like accounting and like a little dog who's like working at a hospital as like a nurse or whatever you know who's got an animated uh, puppy show it's a Hard on Williams oh yeah that's puppy right puppy pals on Disney yeah yeah, so, yeah you, can, you can be the uh, you can be the other right. it's just a bunch of programs of puppy right. of dogs and right. cartoons Sp speaking of comedians on Disney did you see that uh uh, Bill, not Bill Engel. Why am I blanking on his name? I can see his face. He just did Paper Tiger. Oh, uh, Bill Burr. Bill Burr. Bill Burr is in The Mandalorian, the new Star Wars show. I heard. You see, I haven't have you seen. Yeah, dude, I, I saw it with a clip. And it's a, the clip is amazing, right? Because it's so weird. Because like you, I've I've listened to the Monday Morning podcast forever, and I've heard him go numerous times how he hates Star Wars and to see I him. I just stuff. heard him talk about it uh, on Tom Papa's thing. Right, yeah. It's uh, Come to Papa, right? Yeah, it's dude. A, yeah. It's him and him and, uh, Fortune. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's, that's funny, man. Yeah, it, it's so great because like, you hear all this stuff, and then all that noise. there's there's literally a scene of him coming around the corner, and his cheeks are all puffed out, and he's like shooting blasters. <laughs> you know, in his mind, he was thinking all those people, they're gonna be. This is this is the biggest fucking prank, right? And so he's like, I got you, right? So you were not expecting this. You're expecting me in Breaking Bad. That was fine, but this, right? Yeah, exactly. Sci-fi. Yeah, that's uh, hilarious. I haven't seen it yet. I have to see it. Yeah, when you get a chance to watch it. We, were, we had actually touched about this on the walk over here, but like, to me, like, it's great that Disney's doing shows like that, but it's, this is all just coming back into like, this is just cable all over yeah. again. Yeah. It's just a different yeah. version of, of what cable was right. when it started. You know, they just have the same thing. As a matter of fact, I, I mentioned this on the uh, last podcast. This uh, thing called Pluto TV. It's a it's an app. Right. You can download on your phone, and it's basically like a cable system with different channels, like different cable channels right. and all that stuff. Uh, you know, and it's free because it because part of it has ads. The schedule stuff has ads, and then you have like a on demand thing. Right, and like that's, I mean, that is weird because like you're just saying history repeat itself, but like this is that's all, technology change, right? Because all, all we're gonna do, all that's gonna happen one day is like instead of it, there being NBC on like your regular cable, well, it's probably still gonna be on regular cable, yeah, yeah. but they're they're just gonna have the NBC streaming. Well, that's what they're doing. You know, that's what all of the all the major networks are doing right now. That's CBS Access probably has the edge. As far as the networks go, right? Because they've already started, and they started with Star Trek, you know, the Star right. show. But uh, everybody's basically everybody's following in the steps of HBO, right? Exactly. Quite honestly, because HBO was doing this when when cable started. They had the premium channel, and then as soon as the internet came out, they came out with the HBO Yo, Go. Go. Right. So they were on top of it. And then Netflix came out and perfected the the formula, the internet formula for for cable, and now HBO is catching up with that. Right. <laughs> so it's like, and, but HBO was on top of it before because they had HBO Kids, HBO Latino, HBO Com, you know, so they had right. all the channels. So now, yeah, but you're right. It's the same thing. It's just gonna be weird because, like, especially as an entertainer, like going forward, yeah. It's like, 
Like, you, it's it's just going back to, like, the same kind of deals you had to do beforehand. Well, yeah, it's the same thing. I think the disadvantage goes to the, uh, the entertainers, the new entertainers that don't understand that yet. Or haven't, you know, because they've never gone through that process. Mm -hmm. So they all think it's all new. But it's just, it's basically the same thing, you know, new and improved. Basically, because it's the same formula. Right. It's just a different place. So, all right, we're gonna wrap this up. I think uh, the rain's let up. We can get back to our car without melting. All right, chickens are back out. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for uh, hanging out, man. Oh, definitely. Man. I'm gonna ha have a couple clips at the end here, so stick around. Check out uh, Rafik in the movie scene, <laughs> my low budget movie, and then uh, some of his comedy. And uh, as always, man, exhale slow, baby. Peace. Yeah.